So this video is going to start section chapter one, section three, and we're going to um, first introduce um, the idea of the derivative. I'm going to do it through um, kind of a geometric interpretation here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the following situation. Let's say I've got um, some kind of coordinate system. Okay, just like this. It doesn't really matter where I draw my function here, but I'm just going to put I'll put a graph on. So it's going to look something like this. And let's say this guy right here, this is um, this is our f of x. This is the function f. And this is just x down here on this axis. Okay, so this this graph right here, these points represent the function f. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we want to be able to find, and what we covered in that first, um, the very first um, PDF that you looked at, was the following problem. What if you wanted to know, what if you wanted to know the following? Let's say we had a point on the line, and we wanted to know what is the equation of the line that's tangent to that point. More specifically, what is the slope? So what is the slope of this tangent line? Well, we know in order to figure out the slope, we need two different points. Okay, We don't have two points. We've only got one point right here. So here's what we're going to do. To get, to get this line, we're going to take another point that's somewhat close to this initial point. So I have my initial point, and I'm going to grab another point that's also on this line. Okay. And so we're going to say this guy starts at some value over. We just don't know what it is. So I'm going to call it x0 or x sub naught. And the second guy over here, I don't know how far away it is, okay, but it's going to be a little bit of a distance. And we'll call it x sub 1. So these guys are distinct points. They're two separate points. x0 is not the same as x1. Okay. Now, the length, the value in between these guys right here, this length, okay, we're going to call that something. Now, this length right here is given to us by x1 minus x0. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Like, let's say this was 2 over and this was 5 over then the amount of length in between, so the distance between here, is given by this first guy, 5, minus this guy, 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3, and sure enough, the distance between 2 and 5 is 3. So no difference here, we just don't know what x sub 0 and x sub 1 are, or x naught and x 1 are, so we're just going to take the difference. And we're going to call that, we're going to give it a special name, and we're going to call it delta x. So the change in the x values, this length down here, we're going to call delta x. Now, each of these guys also have a height value. Okay, This guy, its height is given by the function at the x value. And this guy has a height of the function at its x value. Okay. Now this length right here is given by, let me do this in a different color for you. Uh, let's do it in green. This length in green right here is given by f of x1 minus f at x0. And we're going to call this delta y. It's the change in the y. So this, um, this dark blue line right here the slope of the dark blue line is given by delta y over delta x because it is the amount of the rise, which is the green guy, over the amount of the run, which is the yellow guy. So it's delta y over delta x. So that slope right, is given by this length and this length right here. So we take this length and divide it by this length, and that's the slope of the blue line. Well now, the slope of the blue line becomes closer to the slope of the white line 
as delta x gets really small. So how we write that using limits is we say the following. We say the limits as delta x gets small, or as it goes to zero, as this length right here becomes super small, as we take the limit of it. So as we take the limits, okay, of delta y over delta x, that'll be equal to the slope of the white line, which is this, the actual tangent line. Now, instead of writing delta y delta x, we know delta y is equal to f of x sub 1 minus f of x 0, and we know delta x is equal to x 1 over x 0. So another way of writing this using what we call the difference quotient is the following. We're going to take the limit as delta x goes to 0 okay, of, now I'm going to do some, some inserting here, okay, and we're going to say that this is going to be equal to the following. If I want delta x to go to 0, remember delta x, okay, um, if I if I go ahead and I move these terms around, if I say delta x plus x naught, that's equal to x1. And so I can write this, if delta x plus x naught is equal to this guy right here, then I can rewrite this as f of delta x plus x naught right here minus f at x naught. And so by inserting what delta y is equal to, which is this, we have f at a little bit of x plus x naught minus f at x naught all over delta x. Okay, so that right there, this right here, if you calculate this, this will give you the slope of the tangent line. Now, there's other ways of, of doing this as far as what variables you, you put in and where you put them, but um, uh, for the most part, that will get you where you want to go. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to let you kind of look through that, read through um, those that first section in your book until you get to example one and then in the next video I'm going to explain what they're doing with example one.